Larry Fink Owns America, a boring and straightforward conspiracy. Welcome to Truth Deal Official. In this video, you will learn about a global conspiracy theory Bloomberg called Boring and Straightforward. Wait a minute, how can a conspiracy theory be boring and straightforward? You'll want to stick around till the end of this video to find out. But first, I am your host, Misinformation. If you like this channel, make sure to subscribe to receive more great conspiracy theories, misinformation analysis, and other sentiments and ramblings that please and amuse us. And become a truth doula, because only you can slay misinformation at its source. Get our app on truthduel.com. When Bloomberg columnist Matt Levine called the Black Rock conspiracy theory boring and straightforward, that was only one part of his analysis. He also called it profound and far-reaching in its implications. And kinda true. Perhaps conspiracy theories work like Occam's razor, where the simplest ones are closest to the truth. So what's the shadowy financial entity called Black Rock? What is the Big Three? And who is Larry Fink? Why is Fink so funky? How much funky money does Fink flip and flop around between his flock of investors? And how does all of this slowly undermine our democracy? First, let's introduce BlackRock and its competitor, Vanguard. There's a good chance you've never heard of BlackRock. Founded in only 1988, in less than 30 years, this American financial firm would grow to become the company that owns the world. Lawrence D. Fink founded BlackRock with a few other traders in 1988. Although BlackRock partners with banks and corporations, the firm is technically an asset management firm. This means BlackRock operates differently than your typical Wall Street investment firm. With analysts glued to their screens, afraid to blink in case they lose one million dollars. Instead, BlackRock manages passive investments, such as ETFs. These are funds that are best left untouched. Just throw your money into them and forget about it. BlackRock also involves itself in public pension plans, endowments, and foundations. Another way to think about it is that BlackRock is a sticky web, and Larry Fink is the spider that waits patiently for money to come to him. BlackRock is a part of the big three asset management firms. The biggest one is Vanguard. It was founded by John C. Bogle in 1975. The third firm is called State Street. Here's a funny, little-known fact about State Street. BlackRock owns it. Here's a second funny fact about State Street. Vanguard is the largest shareholder. Petition to change the name from Big Three to Big Two and a Half. Who owns big business? Today, the answer must be passive investors. They are large shareholders in countless firms all over the world. In the USA, the three biggest passive investors already constitute the single largest shareholder in 40% of all listed firms. How did this happen? The best thing to do when dealing with these financial giants is to follow the money. So how much money does BlackRock manage? Currently, BlackRock manages $10 trillion. That's greater than the GDPs of every country in the world, except for China and the United States. However, that's just BlackRock by itself. And if you combine BlackRock with Vanguard, together they manage around $20 trillion, which is about the same as the United States GDP in 2022. With that level of power, it's no wonder that Washington depends heavily on BlackRock to clean up its financial messes. BlackRock's consulting arm, known as FMA, is the janitor whenever the US economy decides it's time for a regularly scheduled crash. Oh, shit. 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 Oh, shit
During the Great Recession, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York called upon FMA to handle the assets of Bear Stearns and AIG, which were collapsing investment banks. In 2020, during the COVID-19 recession, the Federal Reserve asked FMA to manage an emergency asset purchasing program. Washington really considers BlackRock to be its little darling, since no other asset management firm could even apply for the position. All this money talk may have you wondering, what does BlackRock do with that cash? Do not worry, dear viewer, our Truth Duel investigative reporters on the case. They've compiled a list of some companies BlackRock owns shares in. Firstly, BlackRock has its hands on all of the major banks in the United States, including JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and Goldman Sachs. Beyond that, it controls shares in a variety of industries. These include retail, such as Walmart and Home Depot, to biotechnology companies like Pfizer and Gilead Sciences. BlackRock also invests in the Silicon Valley giants, such as Microsoft and Facebook. Of course, no portfolio would be complete without the military-industrial complex. So BlackRock owns shares in Lockheed Martin and Boeing too. And we haven't even talked about media companies. BlackRock, along with its competitor Vanguard, control large amounts of Fox, CNN, Comcast, and Disney. That's right, the big bad mouse that controls the media is itself controlled by an even bigger and badder company. These companies are all snuggled together like Russian nesting dolls. In total, BlackRock owns shares in 40% of all public companies traded globally. If you focus that scope on American companies, then BlackRock is the biggest shareholder in 20%. Just three companies dominate the ETF market. BlackRock is by far the largest with roughly a 35% market share of uh, domestic market. The next two are Vanguard and State Street, both somewhere in, say, the 15-20% to 20% market share range. ETFs reshaped financial markets in a short amount of time. More than 80% of all assets invested over the past decade have gone to one of the big three according to legal scholars writing in the National Bureau of Economic Research. Experts say the financial and technology industries lend themselves to concentration. How did this even happen? Well, BlackRock became such a profitable business because the ETFs it manages are so profitable. Investors realized that the passive ETFs consistently outperformed actively managed stock portfolios. So they began throwing their cash at BlackRock like it was dancing around a pole, creating a financial oligarchy and the world's most powerful stripper. What does BlackRock do with all of this power? Influence our government, of course. What else? is a shadowy corporation supposed to do? Adopt puppies and kiss babies? Larry Fink holds considerable sway in Washington. His opinion is so important that Vanity Fair reported that he will casually say, as I told Washington, like it's no big deal. He's not bragging. It really is no big deal for Larry Fink. He was a top choice for Treasury Secretary under Hillary Clinton, and he served on an advisory committee under Donald Trump. However, Fink seems seems to prefer his cushy Wall Street offers. Instead, he sends his friends and underlings out to spread his web of influence. Fink has developed friendships with a slew of powerful men, often calling them multiple times a day to offer his advice when they ask. He's befriended Timothy Geithner, President of the New York Federal Reserve and Treasury Secretary, Hank Paulson, CEO of Goldman Sachs, and Ben Bernanke, a Federal Reserve Chairman. Those three men are like Fink's starter Pokemon, and he's determined to catch them all. Former executive BlackRock employees also serve in the US government as secretaries in the Treasury or as economic advisors to politicians. BlackRock's considerable political influence has even prompted the director of investment management at the SEC to call the company a, quote, fourth branch of government. End quote. 
However, unlike the government, BlackRock is not subject to checks and balances that limit its power. It even escapes a lot of legislation that targets Wall Street, since it's technically not an investment bank. And the United States government doesn't want to limit it, because who else will swoop in to save the day when the economy collapses? Not the government. But I want to be sure that we, that we leaders in business find solutions. I never like having government making mandates of how we should be doing things. However, some people argue that there's a group BlackRock is accountable to their clients. Some law professors have pointed out that BlackRock doesn't technically own any shares. They provide the ETFs for investors to own shares through. If BlackRock wants to keep that money, they have to answer to shareholders. Think about that every time you throw $100 into an ETF. What do you want BlackRock to do for you? Misinformation wishes you well and promises I'll ask BlackRock to subscribe to Truth Duel at the next shareholder meeting. P.S. Larry Fink is only one member of what Harvard professor John Coates calls the problem of 12, also known as the 12 people he believes own the world. Who are the other 11? Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The real owners, the big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Until next time, make sure to like our video, subscribe to our channel, and become a truth doula, or BlackRock will own 40% of you.